did you know where all this water is coming from? Well, we're going to show you in our ranch water video. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Well, hey there. Welcome to our episode about the ranch water system. You know, so many of our guests want to know where our water comes from and how we service all the people, all the animals. Uh, I, I think most people know when you're this far out of the, in the country, you're not a part of the city water system. So the answer is no, we're not a part of the city water system. We have our own internal water system, which means we basically are our own water district, which also means when we don't have water, we have to figure out why and we have to fix it. We don't get to call anyone. Uh, so we thought we'd bring you up to uh, where everything really happens and everything intersects. So these are 10,000 gallon storage tanks. All right, we got this little flag deal here on the storage tank. The cool thing about this is uh, it's on a float system. So as we lose, as, as we use water in the tank, the float drops, the flag lifts up. And from just about anywhere on the ranch, we can glance over at this uh, flag system here and know how much water we have available in our tanks because uh, we have not gotten as uh, redneck techy as we probably should and that uh, someday we can have an actual automated float system but we don't have that right now it's manual so one of the first things we do every day when we get up is we check the flag and we see if we need to fill up the tanks or not manually uh, that happens down below at the well uh, what happens is we open up the gate and we've we've shown you that so we open up the gate uh, to these tanks we turn the button on 100 gallons a minute we get water coming up this is the main line here it comes up into the pipe system and then it forks off and it goes to the different <clears throat> to the different tanks uh, we have a number of shutoff valves so that we can direct the water where we want it to go uh, and then what happens is once the water comes up and we shut off the the well We've got water stored here. Well, the water will then just move back down the line, right? So the cool thing about this system is it's on a gravity flow mm -hmm. system, right? So there is no power to pump the water uh, to the houses and to the water troughs. We use power to get the water in, but from here, it's all gravity flow, right? That's what's nice is we have this big mound uh, at the center of the ranch. So we get, that, we get that lift from the water system from the tanks so that we can send the water down these main lines and just just by the pressure built from the fall uh, we get you know it's not a lot but we get 25 psi uh, to the different houses and the tanks and that's good enough it's not what you get in the city so uh, our showers are not necessarily a back massage type shower but hey it gets the job done and it's just fine for us what's really cool is when we run out of power we still have water so we can still take showers and flush toilets but it means that uh, we're constantly monitoring the water lines. Uh, it means that we're constantly having to, uh, to fix broken pipes. If there's a broken line somewhere, it's on us to fix it. Uh, so coming out here, I didn't know anything about plumbing. I didn't know anything about fixing pipes. I didn't understand how all this worked. So over the last 10 years, I've had to become a bit of a, uh, a water pipe uh, and a plumber apprentice. So been learning some stuff about fixing pipes, about putting pipes back together. So the the water system is really divided up into, into two parts. So we, we can split the ranch just about down the middle. And what we find is, so the water line that comes up to the tanks, when you turn the tank off, I found this out after a, a major pipe burst down at the chicken coop, and I could not get the water to shut off because one thing we've come to find, uh, is that there's no there's no map for the underground water lines so when we got here 10 years ago uh, all we knew was what we could see so we could see some lines above ground but most of the water lines are all underground and guess what there's no road map for where the lines come and where they go and where they intersect and most valuable i've learned over the years would be having would be having more shutoff valves and actually knowing where those exist so that somewhere down the line you could just shut off a shutoff valve say like every building should have its own shutoff valve right i mean that would make a whole lot of sense so instead of having to shut off the entire ranch we just shut off one building well first of all we didn't have the shutoff valves to the building so i didn't know so i couldn't shut off that building and then 
as far as I knew, there was only one. The main line here on, on my right side would go down and feed the right side of the ranch. I thought it fed the whole ranch, but after a pipe breaking at the chicken coop and for an hour, we're just spitting water everywhere and I couldn't get it to shut off. I realized that, oh, after pumping water into the tanks and turning the pump off, now the water reverse flows and goes back down. So the, the line in is also a line out when the, when the uh, pump isn't on. So I came to find that this line, the line in is also a line out that feeds the chicken coop and the mare motel and the arena and the hay barn and everything out on the left side. So finally, when I realized that, I could come back and shut off the line in here and that would, that would then uh, stop the water flow to the left side of the ranch and then I could go fix the pipes because I'll tell you what, you cannot fix a pipe. You cannot glue PVC pipe and fix, fix something when uh, there's water flowing out of it. So you have got to drain the line. The glue will not stick. The pipe will not, you'll, you won't be able to put it together. So you've got to figure out a way to shut off the water. So learn that this line is very valuable. This feeds the left side of the ranch. On the right side, there's a line that goes down behind our house and then splits out. And I don't know how the water goes from here to there still. I've found one other shutoff valve. Um, but other than that, we, you know, we've got water all the way out to the to the end of the ranch in some water troughs. We've got water across the road. Um, but for the most part, when we have a break, it seems like nine times out of 10, I'm up here shutting down. So we've got line, line one. So we've got two main lines down to the main part of the ranch. We've got a line that goes across the road to the Wrangler house and to water troughs over there, which I've had to service. So I finally figured out where that line is. Then there's another line that goes to the art house and the cabin. Uh, but we started having issues where we needed to shut the cabin off for a long period of time, but we needed water at the art house. So we had to go dig up the intersection and find the intersection. And of course there was no shut off valve. So we had to dig off, dig up the intersection, put in a shut off valve so we could shut water off to the cabin and service the cabin while the art house still had water. Uh, so learning the value of know where your pipes are, right? Know where they're located. Uh, also too, I've dug them up with the backhoe. When I was simply trying to dig a hole for one thing, I ended up busting a pipe and uh, losing, we, we, we drained the entire 10,000 gallon tank uh, by digging it up with the, with the backhoe. So I've dug up pipes. I didn't know pipes existed. And then in the winter time, you'll find where pipes are when you don't realize they were there. Cause in the winter time, when it drops to be 20, 20 degrees out here, the pipes will freeze and bust and you'll wake up in the morning to a geyser somewhere on the ranch and well, now I know there's a line there. I didn't know it was there before. And so I've spent hours and hours wrapping pipe, getting ready for the winter time. Uh, I've had to go behind my house with a propane torch, uh, a propane heater, and actually thaw the line into my house because we didn't have water for about five hours because the, the line froze. Uh, so water is complicated. It doesn't always go where you want it to go. Um, the, uh, the lines are pretty old out here, so we've had to do a lot of uh, we've had to do a lot of plumbing, redneck engineering with our plumbing lines and getting real creative on trying to put lines back together and keeping the water flowing. So a lot of our time on the ranch is spent managing the water, keeping the water flowing. Because we're our own water district, we also are our own plumbers. All right, well, now that we've given you the, uh, the high level view, literally the high level view of our water system, we're going to head down below. I want to show you the pump house. That's where we open and close valves to then send water to different places on the ranch. One is here. There's two other locations we'll show you. Uh, we're gonna pull out the water buffalo. It's pretty warm today. It's actually hot today. So we're gonna show you how we use water to help cool, not just the kids are in the pool right now cooling off, but we're also gonna help cool the animals. So we've got some, uh, we've got some equipment that'll help us to do that. Um, we also too wanna show you our, the San Benito water tower. So we now have, uh, We've been really blessed with water on this ranch. We've got water at 17 feet down and we've got a lot of it and it's really cool. We do conserve our water, but we've got a, quite a few neighbors that don't have the water that we have. So we're going to show you the, the, uh, the community water tower that we've opened up to our neighbors and uh, any, any given day in the summer, somebody's going to show up with uh, their own water buffalo and fill up water to take home to feed, you know, to, to water their animals and water their house. So, We'll show you that as well. It's a, it's a real blessing for us to get to share our water. So let's head on down.
Today, it's gonna to be watering down the arena and some of the roads. It is quite hot today, but even when it's not super hot, we still like to water down a riding arena. It makes it cooler in there, it keeps the sand down. If you're riding or you're spectating, it's a lot easier on your lungs for Michelle. It's especially easier on her lungs or anybody else giving the riding lessons. So we have a cool little water buffalo we're gonna be filling up, a 500 gallon buffalo that we're gonna be driving around and watering the roads to help cool things and uh, take care of some dust control. So, but first uh, we're gonna start with this uh, fancy dancy uh, piece of ranch equipment. Uh, so this is our main well. Uh, so this is where the water comes out of the ground. This here is the well casing. It goes down about 60 feet. There's a 100 gallon a minute pump that's buried down in there. Uh, what happens is we manually come through and we open up whatever valve that uh, we need to direct the water to, we've got three different locations where we have to run water. So I've got three different valves, uh, but this is the main, this will be the well house, the well, uh, the, the pump, the well house. Uh, <clears throat> this also feeds our water tanks. So we have up on the hill, uh, we've got 10,000 gallons of water and uh, the way it's set up, which is pretty nice actually is that we manually pump the water up but then we've got miles of water line all around the ranch so we are our own water district as well which is another dirty job fixing broken water lines but anyhow the water just gravity flows down to the different houses to the different water troughs for the animals so the nice thing is we have that water storage and we just turn this on once in a while we also have a valve that goes to a water tower so we can fill up the water buffalo and then we have a third valve that goes out to the lawn so we can run sprinklers for watering the lawn, but definitely all summer long, we're also playing in the sprinklers. So three different valves, uh, three different purposes. Now, uh, very important. So we're gonna open up the valve to the water tower, but very, very important. Whenever you're handling a, uh, a well system, I've learned the hard way. Uh, though, I've, though I knew not to do this, it's interesting how you forget that there's different valves open and closed, but it's very, very important that before you ever hit the on button and start pumping water, there's a place for that water to go. I know it's kind of an interesting concept, but I've learned this the hard way that if you don't have valves open on the other side, the water will come back and you'll blow lines, you'll blow your pump, different sorts of things. So, uh, very first thing that we ever want to do before we pump water is we want to open up the valve that's going to send the water to where we want it to go. And in this case, uh, we want to open up this valve here. Right, you've actually, now that you're looking at this, if you walk around town, you'll probably notice you'll see these a lot in shopping centers. You'll see this type of, uh, this type of piece of equipment. And this is, a, this is a gate, right, for a water system. And usually these are chain shot, right, because they don't want people just to go open and close valve. So we're going to open this valve. All right, now that's going to pick up water from the well, bring it on through, through this gate, down the line underneath, and it's going to hit the water tower and we're going to fill up the water buffalo. So valve's open. I've got the valve to the main tanks is shut and the valve to the lawn is shut. All right, and just, just like anything else, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Thankfully, there's a little cheat sheet on the valve handle itself. It says open to the right or shut to the left open close so that way you at least know what you're doing so we know we're open and now we're going to hit the go button and get some water pumping Water buffalo all filled up. Uh, so the great thing about this, it uh, serves two purposes. So one, we've got a boom sprayer on the back. It's about a 30 foot wide spray. So that's awesome for dust control, spraying down. Like I said, we're gonna spray the roads today. We're gonna spray around the Mary Motel. That's gonna help keep the animals cool. It can drop up to 10 degrees. Uh, just the temperature around the animals and even in the arena can drop 10 degrees when you water it down. So this, uh, this little piece of equipment is worth her weight in gold. Uh, the other thing that we can do is uh, it's great for, for fire for fire protection, I guess, or if we had to fight a small fire. Uh, we've got a booster pump on here. This thing pushes uh, quite a bit of water, so we'll fire it up. 
we got these big hoses off the side. So we did have a small fire a couple summers ago. Uh, we were able to put it out with the backhoe and then we hooked the, took the hose off the back and we can roll right up to wherever the fire was burning and fire up the engine and boom, we got our own little fire hose system. Uh, also too, we've put animals out in the back country, uh, but we don't have water out there for them. So we'll put a big trough in the back country and then we'll pull this out to the back country. Again, take off the hose, fire it up and we can water animals uh, you know, anywhere in the back country. So really, uh, you know, really valuable piece of equipment to have on the ranch. Uh, we've got a five and a half horsepower motor. So this pushes about a hundred gallons a minute, pushes a lot of water in a short period of time, have options for spraying off the back, pushing out the fire hose. Um, so really, once we fire this up, we've just got one lever here. We'll engage, we'll engage this one lever. And as we pull that lever forward, that's going to engage the, uh, the water pump for the, uh, for the back. So there's a couple of shutoffs on the back that I've redirected, and that'll help push the water out of the boom sprayer on the back. So anyhow, that's the, uh, that's the beauty of this piece of equipment. Thanks for watching our video today. As you know, the water system out here is highly complicated. Uh, we've learned a lot ourselves about managing the water. We do take it very seriously. We try to be very careful with the water we have out here, use it sparingly. But like we said, we also love to help our neighbors with the water as well. So anyhow, that's our system, though complicated. Uh, it keeps us going here. It keeps us cool. It keeps us alive and water is life. If you enjoyed this video, we'd love to hear from you. Like and subscribe and leave comments about what you might like to see in future videos. We'll see you back on the ranch.